So, after initially getting teased with a game set in the criminal underworld of the Star Wars universe with 1313 back in 2012, 12 years later we finally have a game in that setting with Outlaws. Outlaws is the latest release from Ubisoft's massive entertainment studio, following their game set in the Avatar universe, Frontiers of Pandora, which performed decently well. So with that in mind and being a massive Star Wars nerd, I downloaded Outlaws last Sunday and have been playing it since. And in today's video, I'm going to go over my experience with the game and let you guys know if it's worth picking up. So join me as we dive into Outlaws. It's time to eat. By the way, Ubisoft does not even know who I am, so I'm not one of those YouTubers that got like a key for this game early or anything like that, so... Let's get into it. So the story synopsis is that you play as k Vess, who's an up-and-coming thug, smuggler, scoundrel, mercenary, parkour enthusiast? Whatever. She gets in over her head with a job and now finds herself with a death mark courtesy of a crime syndicate she was trying to steal from. And now she needs to find a big enough score in order to pay off the death mark and move on with her life in the criminal underworld. So first things first, if you do want to pick this game up, how much is it going to set you back? Well, despite what you might have seen in some clickbait YouTube titles or some very angry Twitter post, the game does not cost $120. You can buy an edition that costs that much, but it costs about as much as every other AAA game that comes out now costs, which is $70. In fact, if you subscribe to Ubisoft's subscription service, you can get it for as little as $19.99 a month, which means pick a slow month, subscribe to their service, pay $19, bucks, play through the game, unsubscribe there you go you got the game for $19 essentially the $120 version that you've seen touted in those angry headlines and such that is the early access premium edition which comes with three days of early access some in-game items and I believe the battle pass as well that's the version the version I bought in order to get this game you know three days early in order to make this video but for you 70 bucks or 19 bucks if you want to go with Ubisoft subscription service whatever it's called so let's talk about the game itself now. We'll start off with the positives and then we'll get to the negatives in a bit. So right off the bat, just in terms of like gameplay and game options, there is a lot that can be customized here and individually so. So what I mean by that is that in most games in terms of the difficulty, you got you know, maybe one or two sliders that you can adjust in terms of gameplay difficulty and maybe, you know, like your aim assist and such. But Outlaws allows you to customize your difficulty. Like it's not a single switch that you flip up and down. So you can change options like the enemy's HP, your HP, the damage that the enemies do, the damage that you do. And there, of course, is the, you know, game journalist difficulty, but you can customize this. You can mix and match and get the game feeling right for the challenge that you want out of it. I think that's pretty cool. Certain puzzles can be tweaked as well. You can change the images that are shown up to be simpler to understand. You can adjust their individual difficulty, and you can even just outright turn them off if you don't want to deal with them. So, again, a lot of customization just on the, again, gameplay style rather than the graphics and such, which there are a healthy amount of options there, at least on the PC, to really tune the game for your computer and get the best performance that you can out of your PC. So, moving on from that, the environments are also really, really well done, and this is a huge, a huge plus for me in terms of the game's rating. So, it really feels like you're in the Star Wars universe. There's lots of that, you know, lo-fi technology everywhere. The architecture and such looks appropriate for the Star Wars universe. Like, the seedy areas of the cities that you can visit and of the various worlds that you can visit... They look dirty, they feel dirty, they look dingy, you know, the lighting's not all working, it's kind of, you know, dark and dingy, it feels like the cantina from episode 4 and such. And then you get to, like, the Imperial bases and space stations that look pristine in comparison with their shiny floors and their sterile rooms and such. It just feels right for Star Wars. 
The outfits that characters wear look like they belong in the Star Wars universe as well. And on top of the environments, again, looking and feeling like Star Wars, there's some really cool and really interesting areas that you can visit as well throughout the game. And the game also looks really, really good on my PC. I was running high settings, 1440p. I was getting a pretty solid 60 FPS consistently throughout the... Uh, the playtime I had with the game. I'm on a 3090 and an older i9, so while my PC is certainly on the more powerful side, it's not exactly cutting edge. And again, with all the graphical settings that you can adjust with this game, you shouldn't really have too much of a problem running it decently well on your PC, as long as you have a pretty beefy rig. But of course, if you want to go and turn, you know, ray tracing and such on, you're going to need, again, a pretty healthy PC to get to that level. And the game just looks good again all around not like amazing you know like oh my god is this really a game levels of good but it looks good for what it is right the sound design is awesome as well it sounds like star wars the ships have that you know that industrial sound to them the voices on the com link sound right for the setting you know they got that kind of scratchiness to them Basically what like Andor did for Star Wars streaming shows with their environment, which is again absolutely nail it for Star Wars, Outlaws has done for Star Wars games. Because there's been some games that don't really feel right when it comes to their environment, but Outlaws and like the Jedi Survivor series, those two have certainly absolutely knocked it out of the park. Another plus for me is that the mini games are pretty neat, especially the lock picking mini game. So rather than do the standard, you know, like Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout lock picking mini game that so many games have done before, it's a rhythm mini game. Like you got to time your clicks to the uh, beat of the lock, which saying that out loud doesn't really make a lot of sense, but like in game it's pretty satisfying to do. Uh, the hacking mini game is also pretty cool as well. But again, you know, you can turn these off if these aren't po positives for you. So that again in and of itself is a positive and I've already attributed that to the score uh, but yeah you know I do like the mini games they're, they're pretty entertaining they can get kind of repetitive shall we say but we'll, we'll get to that here in a second uh, nextly Nyx Nyx is surprisingly cool he's the little pet that you've seen running around in the trailers and in the promo videos and such and he's more than just like a gimmick to sell plushes and such. He's really useful in game. So he can fetch things as you're running by them. A little icon will pop up. You can send him over there to grab that. Then he'll come back to you. You can, uh, you know, take whatever he's got in his mouth. And this can be anything from, you know, supplies, collectibles, weapons, uh, you know, quest items and such. So it's a pretty handy just right there. But he can also be used to solve puzzles and open up, you know, new and different paths in the world because maybe there's like a vent that he can fit through but you can't get through uh get through and you can send him in there he'll flip the switch open a door or something and you know he's, he's really useful for things like that and it's neat that they you know integrated him in more than just being you know a, a fetch thing right he can also be used to distract enemies when you're trying to be stealthy and such and he can be used in combat as well essentially what you can do in combat is you can sick him on an enemy he'll jump on their face and he'll pretty much stun him for a few seconds so let's say and this can also be used in stealth too right like there's two enemies in front of you and you know you're just one player right so you can't go in and you know double assassinate like it's assassin's creed so you can sick nix on one of the characters and then you can walk up to the other uh, enemy character, knock him out, and then while Nyx is doing his thing on the other guy's face, you can knock that guy out back to back. Or in combat again, you know, you can send him to jump on their face, deal with the other guy, then deal with that guy. So he's pretty cool, and you know, as the game goes on, you can do a little bit more with him and such. So again, I really liked him, and plus he's just adorable as well, especially when you hit the boost on your speeder bike and he's trying to hold on for dear life. <laughs> Space combat was also surprisingly solid. I, I forgot that there was space combat in this game because of, well, again, we'll get to that, to that in a second. Uh, there's essentially two modes you can go into. One is more of like the War Thunder-esque mode where, you know, you have to follow the enemy ships yourself, lead them correctly, you know, match your speed to them and all that jazz. So if you like that more challenging gameplay approach, you can play it like that. But then there's also an option to where you can just hit I think it's right mouse and then you just automatically track the enemy ship and all you really have to do is 
worry about your aiming, which again, it's doing most of the aiming for you, so it's just like, oh, you have this I win button, but you can also just not press it and play it in the more uh, challenging way if you wish. And also, too, if you're kind of in a rush, you can, you know, use the I win button to just hurry up and, you know, get through the space combat and then move on to the next section of the game. The ship overall feels about right in terms of its handling, which that is a very large part into having a satisfying experience overall with any type of vehicular based combat. The, the, the vehicle has to feel right, you know, and on PC, at least using mouse and keyboard, the uh, Trailblazer, which that's the name of the ship, does feel right. So that's a big plus. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, that's most of the positives that I could think of for this review. So now let's talk about the negatives. So probably the biggest thing that you've seen in terms of this game is the exceptionally just inconsistent facial animations and the lip sync and the models. So like, a lot of what I was seeing before this game came out was... Um, Kay's face all over, you know, Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff, making fun of the way that she looks. And I thought, well, there's no way, you know, she looks like that in game and such. And, you know, when you get into game and you get into the initial, you know, in-game cutscenes, she doesn't look bad at all. And facial animations look fine and the eye tracking looks fine and great and all that. But then once you get further and further into the game, it's like they had, I don't know, three or four different models of not only her, but everybody else. Like, I'm pretty sure there's, like, a model for the in-game cutscenes that the game will load in that's, you know, high fidelity. It's got all the facial details and such. And that's what they use their, you know, good face tracking software on. And they use their good lip syncing, either software or artists, however you, you know, lip sync audio to video games, animations and such. And that's what they used. But then there's like a second model that they'll use that's a little bit lower detailed, and that's for like the in in game cutscenes, you know, where the camera stays, you know, attached to the back of your character, and you can still kind of look around and stuff, to where the facial animations aren't that great, the lip syncing's really, really bad. Got it. John does hope. And I want you to find him and bring him to me. So that's why you need an outsider to keep this quiet. <sighs> it's a delicate situation. A Crimson Dawn agent was overheard on their comlink, planning this little coup. Where? The mirror. And it's just like, oh my god, like, is this finished? There's times when, like, the lips don't keep moving for, like, a fraction of a second, but they should, and times when they shouldn't be moving for, like, a fraction of a second, but they are. I don't know if they just kind of let some automatic system do the lip syncing, but it's not right, like, 40% of the time. And it's really, really off-putting. It's kind of like, you know, when you're watching a, a, a dubbed movie and the lips aren't syncing up, it really feels like that, and it really takes you out of the experience. Um, but it's really, really weird. Now, as far as, like, the models of the characters go, the main characters in-game, they're all, again, good-looking. Like, Kay looks fine if you're not, you know, taking her, uh, you know, like, one frame out of a trailer or something like that, or you're not playing on, like, the lowest settings possible, right, just to make her character look really blocky and such. She really looks fine most in most cases, um, so there's that. But the bigger thing is, again, just the weird lip syncing and the facial animations, too, on the NPCs when you're talking to, like, a merchant or something or, like, a side quest giver. There's times when, like, we go back to, like, 2000 and, like, 10 boys or even further back because Assassin's Creed Odyssey, all the NPCs you talk to, when you talk to them, you know, like, their character's looking at you, the eyes are looking at your character, and, you know, the eyes are tracking your character's face as the NPC does, like, their talking animations and things like that. Like, it looks like you're talking to a human. But here in Outlaws, their, their eyes are just, like, locked dead ahead, and they've got, like, Mass Effect Andromeda Syndrome, where, like, the face just, like, why aren't, isn't your face moving? If it's not the pirates, it's the gangs. And if it's not the gangs, it's the Empire. What are we supposed to do? Yeah, can't have a crew without some muscle. Maybe you should hire some. Yeah, good advice. Here, 
for helping us out. Like your mouth is moving, but your face isn't moving and it looks friggin weird. And again, I don't know if they ran out of time or they just didn't finish it or they thought, they thought no one would notice. But that is the biggest, biggest issue when it comes to like the NPC models and the animations and such. So that's just weird and off-putting. It takes you out of the experience. So it, you know, you have this big, beautiful world that's really well done and then like the interaction with the characters in this world in this world takes you out of it. It's also weird too, like sometimes you'll be talking to the syndicate boss on that planet for one of the other side factions and we'll get to that in a second. And like they have this really crappy facial animation and lip sync going on. It's like what this is like the main guy on this planet for like the huts or the pikes or Crimson Dawn and you couldn't track his face properly or you couldn't sync his li his lips properly what are you doing you know like the little side quest characters i could kind of see you know not dumping a whole lot of time into getting them right but like the main quest givers on the planet you should really get those right ubisoft so yeah that that's the end of my rant on that that should have been done better it's not uh, other thing the enemy ai um it's bad it's it's really bad, which is really funny because before I bought this game, I was watching another YouTuber, and I won't mention their name, and they're like, oh yeah, the enemy AI is really neat. They actually thoroughly search the area when they think they spotted you. No, they don't. They do the standard, huh? What was that? Then they walk over to the area, huh? Guess it was nothing, and then they go back. Like, they do less searching than, again, the enemies in, like, Assassin's Creed Odyssey do, because if you get spotted in that game, the enemies actually come over to where you were last spotted at and they start looking around that area like if you were spotted coming out of like a bunch of tall grass they'll go to the tall grass and they'll start you know like fanning their way through it looking for you they don't do that in outlaws at least from what i saw they just kind of walk over stand there for a second maybe look around for a second or two and then they go back to where they were beforehand and also sometimes they're just really really dumb so, yeah, now granted, that's not exactly an Ubisoft thing, but like, this game's whole thing is that it's a stealth game. So, if your whole thing is that you're a stealth game, your AI should be top tier, but it's not. So, that don't make no sense, fellas. So unfortunately, that's a pretty big tick. Now, if you do t crank up the difficulty, they are a little bit smarter, but it's not a tremendous improvement. I played on regular, everything was set to regular, you know, because I think that's where, you know, the game is designed to be played at. So, yeah, wasn't the best ever. Now, probably one of the biggest complaints I have is that the missions are incredibly repetitive. And they are incredibly, incredibly tedious at times. And keep in mind, too, that... Well, I'll save this for the next section, but there, there's a, so something that goes with this. So, the missions are really repetitive, which is pretty standard for Ubisoft. But here, it, it, they, they kind of take it to the next level. Because it's, go to this area, get this item, sneak in, get it, bring it back, get rewarded. That is about 80% of the missions like that 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 exact that exact chain of events you go to an area you sneak in you pick some locks you maybe hack a computer or two you get the item that the quest giver needs and then you go back it's fetch quest at the fetch quest at the fetch quest at the fetch quest and in fact before you leave the tutorial area you have to do a fetch quest in order to do a fetch quest like you literally have to go get it was what some type of power generator to then go steal a hyperdrive computer in order to get your ship a hyperdrive computer so that you can finally you know leave the tutorial planet so you have to do a fetch quest before you can do another fetch quest that is just ah why ubisoft why why so yeah, and this is in the tutorial section. So, like, the part of the game that's supposed to, you know, grab your attention and get you hooked on the game, it's all fetch quests. That's all the tutorial is for the tutorial planet. And that is beyond infuriating. So, then we get to the... 
And this really isn't a negative. It's, it's negative that this isn't used more. The reputation system between the various syndicates, it's a pretty cool idea. So with the various syndicates in game, the Pikes, the Huts, and Crimson Dawn, you have a reputational, a reputational standing with each of these underworld crime syndicates. And as you do jobs for them, your reputation will go up. You have access to their vendors to let you in their areas on the map without questioning you. And you can go around in there and you can, you know, kind of play them off of one another. You can get really high reputation with one syndicate. Then, like, let's say you have a high reputation with the Pikes. And then the Huts want you to steal something from the Pikes. Well, since you have a high reputation with the Pikes, you can just walk in and as long as you don't get caught, take what you need from the Pikes, then go give it to the Huts. So, you know, that's a pretty cool idea. But the thing is, like, there's no real downside of just trashing one syndicate's reputation. Your, 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 your reputation with one syndicate. Yeah, you know, they won't give you quests or anything, but, like, that's about it, you know. That's, you yeah, that's... Okay. So, if that was a little bit more in-depth and fleshed out, it, it would have been a cooler concept. Another thing is that um, there's no real weapon variety in the game. By that, I mean you have case pistol, blaster pistol, which in-game is described as a heavy pistol despite being incredibly tiny. You know, heavy pistol is something like Han Solo's DL-44. That's a heavy pistol, heavy blaster pistol. But you have this, like, it literally looks like the, was it the quiet cricket, uh, the, the quiet cricket or the silent cricket from uh, Men in Black? That's literally what it looks like. It's just this tiny little thing. That's all you got. Now, you can unlock modules and such, which do change the way that the blaster pistol works. But that's it. You can't get any other pistol to carry around. And you can change the way it looks and such, but it functions the same. Um, and you can pick up weapons off of the ground from enemies that you've knocked out or um, shot. But the thing is, you can't carry them forever when you like climb on your speeder bike you you drop it when you go to you know climb over a wall you drop it so you lose it when you leave whatever area that you are currently in so yeah that's boo and again i get it's a stealth game but like you know let, let me have you know a couple different blaster pistols maybe i can have a, a blaster pistol that hits really friggin hard but it has a smaller amount of charges you know, something that you could use in a stealth game. Maybe I can unlock some type of, I don't know, silence blaster pistol. You know, j just a little bit more variety there with the weapons Kay can have equipped and keep with her would be pretty nice. So now we get to my biggest gripe with the game. So I bought this game in early access. Well, not really early. Well, it is early access, but it's not like Steam early access, right? I bought the $120 early access bundle in order to play the game three days early so that I could have time with the game in order to make this video you know, a proper video. Here's the thing though, um, so after charging me and other players $120 for early access, the game doesn't work. There is a problem with the early access build of the game where you will get stuck either on a planet or in space because your ship doesn't register with the game anymore. For some reason, this got by Ubisoft. I don't know if they didn't play it, play the game for long enough, or play the particular build for long enough, but when you are charging players $120, and they have to stop playing and can't progress any further because of something that should have been so easily caught in playtesting, but you just didn't put the effort in to check it out. And it's not like it's a problem that can be patched. Because it has been patched. But guess what? You have to start over from the beginning in order to fix the problem. So Ubisoft released the patch on, I think, the Monday night that early access began. And I was able to get in on Sunday for some reason. So I played Sunday night, Monday evening, Tuesday evening, Wednesday evening... I put about seven hours into this game before I got to the point where I could no longer progress anymore. And, you know, I tried Googling to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. But sure enough, I had this bug where my ship no longer registered. So I had to start all over again after seven hours of playtime. 
Now, before you start typing things, I am not a YouTuber full time. I have a day job. I'm a teacher. I don't have days to spend playing this game all over again. You know, I'd come home, do my World of Warships video, and then I'd, you know, play Outlaws for a couple of hours and then go to bed and rinse, wash, and repeat because I wanted to make an Outlaws review video because I love Star Wars and I, you know, wanted 1313. And this is about closest to 1313 as we're going to get, apparently. Um, but... Yeah, so that absolutely sucks and should have been caught in testing. Now, you might be wondering, well, then how can you fully review a game if you can only play seven hours of it before you had to start over again? Because, fellas, um, I have unfortunately played a lot of Ubisoft games. They keep setting their games in some really, really cool settings that just pull me in. And then I play them, and guess what? They're all the same for the entire duration of the game. Fetch quests or the same thing over and over and over again, that's what it is. Uh, except for, you know, like, a couple of the Far Cry games and stuff, you know, that that's literally what their their business model is, or I should say their game model is. Fetch quest, repetitive quest, every now and then you'll get, you know, a scripted quest that's a little bit different than the other ones, but that's all it is. And I did go watch some gameplay from later on in the game, and guess what? It's all the same. Enemies are acting the same, um... They might have a little bit more health, they might be a little bit smarter later on in the game, but it's the same as the tutorial planet. So, yeah, I feel pretty confident in saying that, you know, after having played this game, well, seven hours on my first playthrough, I'm two hours into my second playthrough, and I'm almost back to where I was beforehand, I'm just skipping all the cutscenes and stuff, and just doing a main, a main quest speedrun at the moment. Um, yeah, so after playing this game for nine, almost ten hours at this point, I just have, again, an unfortunately high familiar familiarity with Ubisoft games that I can see where this is going. And you know what? Um, I looked up some reviews for Frontiers of Pandora, and guess what? It's the same thing. They nailed the location. Game looks great. There's a couple of cool things in there, but it's super repetitive. Same studio made Frontiers of Pandora as Star Wars Outlaws. So I feel really confident with my review of this game. Overall, the rating... If it worked, if I was able to continue on without having to restart from scratch, I would have given it a 6. But that is an inexcusable mistake from Ubisoft. That if you're charging players $120, almost double the price of the base game, you can't be bothered to playtest it enough to where you simply play for what seems like 7, 8, or 9 hours and catch that bug before you, you know, put your build up to be bought then that's just inexcusable in my mind. Um, so they lose some points for that. But it would have been a 6. Right now, it's a 5. And that's a very generous 5. Because the game is average in terms of gameplay. Because it's just nothing but fetch quests. But, you know, if you've played Ubisoft games before and you keep buying Ubisoft games, I guess you do like fetch quest. And I'm just kind of talking at myself right here when I say that. But the wonderful environments and, you know, the noise, the visual design of the game... Um, that all, and Nyx was going to put it at a 6 for me, but we're at a 5 right now because of Ubisoft being lazy. So my recommendation is that wait for it to go on sale. This will probably be half off by Black Friday. So if you pick this, pick this game up for like 30 bucks, 35 bucks, or even like 40 bucks, I think you got, you know, your money's worth there with the space combat and the environment and Nyx. And, you know, there are some pretty cool moments that I had in my you know, seven, eight, nine hours of playtime with the game. So I do think, again, you know, like around the 40 buck margin, that's when I would pick it up. Um, you could also do, again, the Ubisoft subscription thing where you just, you know, get one month of it, pay the 19 bucks, cancel it right after that. That way you only get charged for one month. And then you could probably play through this game in definitely a month, you know, worth of weekends or whatever. Um, for sure and get your money's worth of it like that but anyway guys that is my two cents on star wars outlaws let me know what you guys think in the comments down below you're planning on picking up the game have you picked up the game what is your experience with it hope you guys enjoyed have a wonderful sunday wonderful rest of your weekend hope to catch you guys in the next one